Making a selector kit's a little tricky. What you have to do is nest an instrument rack and a drum rack. What is a selector kit? A selector kit is a way for you to program drums in MIDI that allows you to swap out the samples on the fly so you can audition them in context with each other and make sample selection decisions while your pattern plays. It's super useful, it's super convenient, it's something that makes Ableton Live incredible. I haven't really seen this in other DAWs. If this feature is included in Logic or Pro Tools or something, please let me know. Cubase users, Bitwig, like anything else you guys use. So first off, what is a selector kit? A selector kit is a way for you to program drums in MIDI and then make sample swap selections live. This allows you to audition samples in context as your pattern plays back. First, let's look at an example. Now, as I play these samples, if I twist these knobs at the start, you can hear it lets me cycle through different kicks. And like, listen to how fast that is. That's incredible. Fast. Normally what you'd have to do is go to your side library, you'd have to select a sample, you'd scroll through them, afterwards maybe you'd make a pattern with that sample, you have to swap it out, there are just too many steps. This way, you can listen to it in context, you spin a knob, and then you say, yeah, I like that kick. Now in relation to this kick, what's going to be a good snare? Not this. That's pretty cool. And you can hear that I just made a decision really quickly using my ears. This snare was resampled the TDK SA90 tape from 1985. My name is Mike Ash, but I make music as into cassette. And an arbitrary constraint that I'm working with is that in every single track, I have to include a cassette recording. In order to do that, batch processing ahead of time is really useful. I've already cut all these snares to and from tape. Now I know I don't have to hook up my cassette deck to the audio interface. I can just start playing with the snares that I have here. So how does one set this up? Like how do you make a selector kit if you wanna do this? What you have to do is nest an instrument rack in a drum rack. It's a little tricky, there's a few steps, but I think I can walk you through it. The first thing is to do Command Shift T to create a new MIDI track. So we've got a new MIDI track. We're going to go up to the instruments panel. We're going to click on drum rack and drop that into the MIDI track. Over here under C1, we're going to drop an instrument rack. You're going to see that that opens up this panel to the right. In order to open up the panel fully to the right, we're going to press these lines and that allows us to drop samples over here too. So opening up this folder, if I select all these samples by holding Shift, it allows me to grab them as a group. I'm going to drag and drop them to the right over here. You can see that now my samples are in this list. Now we want to click on this circle to open up the macros and also in this list hide is selected. We want to select chain so it opens up the chain to the right. If you do control A that selects all the samples and you can drag out this marker here so it goes from 0 to 127. That's indicating what MIDI value this could be. So this could now be MIDI value 0 to 127. That's taking up the full range. And since all of these samples are taking up the full MIDI range, that means that once we hit a note, it's going to hit all of them at once. That's not what we want. So as all these samples are selected, if we right click on this and click distribute ranges equally, it now spreads them out across these 128 MIDI values. And you can see that they each take up their own amount of space. The next thing I want to do here is select this orange marker and click map to macro one. That says chain selector. We're going to call that kick select. We're also going to open the macros at the front of the drum rack. Right click on this map to macro one. We can now collapse this set of macros because we have the macros in the front. And you can see now that if we select this kit and cycle through the samples, our kicks play back, which is what we want. All right, so that's great. The next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna go up to MIDI effects and I'm gonna add note length and I'm also gonna add velocity. And this is an option for fixed velocity. So I'm gonna put this on the front in case I want my kicks to trigger at full velocity every time. See how much louder they are? sounds much better, much more beefy, much more presence. I'm going to rename this fixed vel. I'm going to double tap this so it collapses. And now I have the option to turn it off and on. For note length, you could turn off time and have it be synced to the BPM. This is 124th length. It gets longer the more you move to the right in terms of lengths. The shorter the length, the shorter the kick sample. 164th is the shortest. One quarter is the longest. If you want a little bit more of a sensitive range, you can turn off sync here. This will just give you time options for note length. And you can really dial it into taste. This is short and tight. We have longer and bassier. 
after that, we're going to add a bunch of processing to the right and we're going to process all our kicks in the same way. But that's going to be the following tutorial. I'm going to show you how to process kicks. I'm also going to show you how I process snares. So we have fixed velocity option. We have note length option and we can select between all these different kicks. I obviously just grabbed 10 at random, but you could grab up to 128 total. You can also select all this MIDI information and do control G to put it in a group. We're going to title this our selector kit. And why don't we name it something special like tutorial toot toot selector kit. I'm now going to drop this into my user library. It says toot selector kit. I'm going to press enter. Pressing enter saves it. And now anytime I want to recall that selector kit, I can just type in toot our like little code or our identifier. Um, and now we can drag and drop that into our project file. So we don't have to program this MIDI information every time. We can just drag and drop the fragments of our projects and reassemble a full set that way. So why don't we look at an example together? Let's loop our favorite part of that. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up some audio tracks so that we can record the audio from this. So I'm going to create three new audio tracks. One, two, three. You have new hi-hat BAP is recording into hi-hat audio. And you can see over here I've selected new hi-hat BAP instead of external in. I have the same thing over here for a new kit VHS. That's my drum bus. That's going to be recording into KS audio for kick snare audio. Down the bottom I have drum audio, which is just resampling the whole kit. So as it plays here, I'm going to cycle through different samples. You might have to mix them and adjust the volume. Okay, let's say we want to use this hi-hat. So I want to give you two pieces of advice for this. The first piece of advice is that you want to curate with intention. You want to have focus search criteria for those samples so that now you can put them in the same folder and they'll all kind of make sense. It's not just going to be 128 random kicks. There's going to be 128 kicks that you picked that fit a certain criteria. So the first tip is think about grouping things thematically. You're now a curator. You want to collect samples and then you want to organize them and sort them into different folders so that when it actually comes time to make a beat, you've already done that identifying and tagging process first. The next piece of advice I wanted to give you is that selector kits are super useful for batch processing. I use cassettes in every single recording because I'm into cassette. So I like to cut all of my snares to cassette first before the production session. So you could collect 128 snares that you really like, bounce them to tape, cut them all up, and then add them back to your selector kit. So the first piece of advice is curate with intention. The second piece of advice is do batch processing. Alter them in big groups so they all have the same characteristic. I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you and have a great day.